march and take over the screen and get it ready before I start recording. Oh, good, Alicia, you did make it. Uh, Alicia, audio check. Uh, right. Alicia, can you hear hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me all good. right? Good. Okay, good. Yeah. We were worried about finding you. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Martin, uh, get your presentation up and then I'll start recording. Okay. So here I go with... <clears throat> now it's telling me my browser is preventing access to my share screen. Uh, did anything change? Let me just refresh. Is it going now? Good. And you're muted. Okay. You can see it. Uh, okay. Good. Audio, video, presentation. Good. Sounds good. With that, I'm going to. And um, then before I start recording, I have a hard stop at 10 o'clock, so I'll be precise on time. So yeah. with that, I'm going to. Oh, let's see. I have to do one other quick thing. I have to take. Me and make the co host. Now I can record to the cloud. Okay, recording has started. Fab Academy recitation, a really core topic for Fab Labs sustainability that we have a great group for on sustainability agriculture materials. So, Martin, take it away. Okay, so that's 15 minutes and questions uh, right after the 15 minutes, or is it all at the end? Uh, it, it, interactive. Uh, okay. 20 minutes a person. Questions can be at the end. Questions can also be in the chat. They can break in if they're urgent. Go ahead. Excellent. Thank you. Well, we've got a lot to do with sustainability. We talk about, uh, so my name is Marchen from Open Source Ecology. We design and build open source industrial machines, publish the plans on the internet for free. You might have heard about the Global Village construction set. So today what I'll do is I'll talk about a project that we have going on with the Open Building Institute, a project to make affordable housing widely accessible. And how does this relate to housing? Well, part of the structures that we build are aquaponic greenhouses. I'll talk about some of the automation and digital fabrication aspects of that. So I'll do a quick recap of what I talked about last year. You can also watch my TED talk about the Global Village construction set, 50 different machines. We do have some product releases like the compressed earth block press, 3D printers, now the, now the house. Uh, so uh, last time I talked about uh, our printers uh, that are scalable. We use these a uh, lot of modular interchangeable parts like the universal axis, which can be scaled up to large machines like torch tables or even larger machines like heavy duty machines. Uh, and tractors. So this starts to relate to agriculture here where um, uh, interchangeable parts can work together. You see construction work. This is some of the latest, um, not, not super latest, but recent work. Uh, aquaponic greenhouse, which is the main topic for agriculture. But uh, when we talk about ecology, I also want to just bring up the concept of uh, how we do things with Product ecologies meaning machines, building machines like the Fab Fab Lab concept. So from 3D printers, we make larger parts for the larger axes for torch tables. Torch tables are used to cut steel, like for the brick press or tractor. But then a big question about industrial ecology is how do you return back to uh, feedstocks? And that is through additional product ecologies such as shredders and plastic extruders or induction furnaces, which allow you to either make uh, virgin plastic from waste plastic or virgin metal from steel so going all the way up to completely cyclic uh, material flows and we use highly modular build systems of all kinds of interchangeable parts like motor units power units where you see that motor unit being used both in wheels or or uh, the big um, trencher here here's a smaller tractor and we talk about construction set approaches so uh, getting to the aquaponic greenhouse and agriculture, this is the build from 2015, uh, one that was our first experiment in getting a really nice system going. We built another one in 2016, and then 
um, we were building another. So what's the, what's the news for this time? Right now, about this time, it's time for product release of both the, the houses and the greenhouses that we're, we're doing. Some of the things that are relevant is going, moving towards 3D printed components. I mentioned about 3D printers and shredders and uh, implied filament making, but the idea is that if you take the waste plastic stream, we can, um, we can start building production, uh, construction materials if we have access to low cost waste stream plastic that allows us to do so at very low cost. So for example, here's a, an example of double wall pop. This is not polycarbonate, but, but for example, our, um, the windows in our greenhouses are polycarbonate. Well, you can print with polycarbonate, but here's an example of printing with PLA for the double wall glazing structure. 3D printers are great at applications like that, such as heat retaining glazing. So that's one, one application of digital fabrication here. So with the larger printers and uh, making of filament from the waste stream, we aim to be able to print not only the glazing, but also even the panelized construction modules that we build. Um, so uh, that's, a, that's a lot of good work that we're working on. And some of the other, we will also include some experiment, experimental aspects building on what we already have done with the, the greenhouse, such as going towards closed loop water th systems with worm towers, ozonators, and biological waste water reclamation. So I'll talk a little bit about that. So for example, here in this uh, bottom left corner, you see uh, growing towers, which are filled with medium and we can grow worms in them if you put biological medium in there or grow plants in them. So this is the general concept, modular design using the vertical space. There's fish ponds and, and vertical space. So in a greenhouse like this, you're using four feet down on the ponds and you're going about eight feet vertical with towers. So that's a, that's a big deal using that vertical space so we can get literally get like 10 times the productivity. So this was how we were starting on a build with a glazing. Uh, this is some of the For four or five days, it was we run workshops, and this is the final product. Did I? Um, <clears throat> which which part froze? <clears throat> you can't hear me. Uh, can you guys? Can you guys? Uh, let's see. Continue. Can you hear me now? Uh, how far did you get up? Did we get up to? Okay, glazing getting loaded in. So let's see if I can do this again. Um, is this is it working now? To here? Okay. Excellent. So we've got the tractor here now, the shipment of polycarbonate glazing, which we use to build um, to build the structure like this. This is after a five day workshop. We did this all with a swarm of about 25 or so people. We do these uh, collab collaborative swarm builds uh, to do things like this as an immersion education experience for people. And that's what the inside looks like with uh, 12 feet of vertical space, about four feet down into the ponds with aquaponic tilapia. The tilapia provide fertilizer to grow plants in the towers. What you see on the right hand side is also uh, nursery work, meaning we're actually growing out a bunch of hazelnut plants that are uh, that have been planted out in the field already. This was a few years ago now. Um, so what are the, that's some more pictures. What are some of the systems in there? It's a, it's a whole biological system between fish, worms. Um, there's recycling of, uh, of nutrients. We had black soldier fly larvae. We have the fish that, uh, that poo in the water and that's fertilizer for the plants. 
And we're taking this further, actually, in that the warm tower, these, these are green growing towers, but you can also fill the, the towers up with warm medium. We actually found that in the warm tower, in the, actually the, the plant towers themselves, worms would actually get in there through the whole system and uh, take over the space. So we actually have this concept that, well, why not... Uh, instead of just the fish fertilizing uh, the plants, what if we actually took it a step further and include a biodigester step, so anaerobic digestion, and then after that, the effluent, which is almost fertilizer, fed through warm towers or warm beds uh, to, to make this thing work. Now, so yeah, we had a lot of variety in there, like we also had chickens and mushrooms, but what's the deal about um, potential for of the dig digital fabrication. So if we talk about one of the things we found out is um, planting the towers, we could definitely benefit from some automation. So a system ki kind of like you might have heard about FarmBot, and this common agricultural robot, open source project, uh, using that to seed our trays, w which we then plant out in the vertical towers. That would be a good idea to include some digital fabrication or <laughs> digital automation in the whole whole program here other things we did we, we 3d printed for example cups that go into the towers that hold the little mass of vermiculite that holds the plants so that was a useful thing to do for 3d printing these towers actually they're these are not 3d 3d printed they're off the shelf that's just pvc pipe with reticulated foam medium but you can also 3d print these and some people have done that and stack them up even if you have a small printer you can print small sections and then stack them up vertically um, now the other thing that i want to point out to is uh, in this system there there are some other useful 3d prints that you can do like for example in a in a growing shelves for the nuts here they are growing in trays that's actually watered uh, that, that gets watered by the fish water as well. There's actually hydronic heating that, that's inside the water for the winter so that the fish can get heated and grow faster. But they, uh, one thing that was really useful with 3D printing is we, 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 we installed fittings, which were fittings that allowed us to fill the top tray and then the water would fill the tray and then at a certain point, it would start spilling to the shelf below. Now, there weren't any commercial fittings that could do that. They're basically like an overflow fitting with a weep hole. So once you stop watering, all the water falls back into the ponds. But while you're watering, um, the water overflows. So, it, so it's a complicated fitting that we needed for this specific purpose that we did with 3D printing. Um, what else is there? So there was hydronics, uh, the fish, <clears throat> mushrooms, and... Um, this kind of stuff. So you can see all this on a wiki. We're also installing a, a control system. So one of the things that's um, very useful is to automate the watering because we've actually, by this time, ended up spilling or flooding our ponds several times already because you just forget to turn off the water at some point. So actually one of our ponds has caved in and we're going to have to actually fix that. But automated watering systems can definitely do it. Simple Arduino, solenoids, water solenoids would be a good idea. Here's a picture of this uh, actual complicated fitting that we had to do for the shelves for the the nut breeding and which we then have planted out. And we've seen a lot of different uh, pest management happening, ladybugs, um, praying mantises feeding on other critters, frogs settled in here, things like that. But the idea there is actually quite ambitious. And if you look at it, um, maybe I'll finish with that and then go to questions. But the energetics, the idea there was, can we actually feed two people a full diet from the biological production of 800 square feet? That's essentially a greenhouse attached to the front of a house. Well, if you do the math, that's 70 kilowatts solar input plants convert sunlight at 1%, so you get about 700 watts worth of biological uh, chemical energy. Um, now, if you talk about the sunlight, uh, the, sun, the sun shines half the day, so you really have like 300 watts of chemical energy stored. Now, an average human uses about 100 watts of power, so that 350 watts uh, is not gonna do it if, because energy conversion of us eating food, like the fish or the mushrooms or the plants in there, 
uh, we could only get like 35 watts per per for out of that greenhouse unless we actually use some more external feedstocks like the like chickens rabbits fish food uh, those are external inputs those are not direct input uh, by solar gain and with that it turns out the the productivity is amazing we have 3,000 gallons of, of fish pond which means three pounds of fish per day so that's actually plenty to, for a couple of people to live on uh, then if you talk about mushrooms which live on straw they provide uh, we got re results of 12 pounds of mushrooms over one square foot of uh, vertical uh, buckets with mushrooms so stuff like that it, productivity is actually really amazing and we found that yeah if you do have external inputs like straw or chicken feed or if you've got fish food yeah you can definitely do it but it's kind of hard if you just depend on a, um, depend on the productivity itself but anyway so I think I might end at that because I think my time is out uh, but maybe we can have some questions uh, I also have this presentation online so I can send you links Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, good good question. Can you hear me? You can still hear me? Okay. Um, the thing is that it's easy to get a get a system uh, that I mean what we have is a prototype still, but we've learned so much and it the point is it's definitely not available as open source information you have to really go far and if anyone actually has a system that works and works really well it's all proprietary like for example the towers we innovated on that so it was something that we built upon and made it cheaper better and faster stronger so we actually don't have a comparable model with this level of integration that we know of i mean as far as ancient wisdom this it's not, yeah, I mean, of course it's ancient wisdom. People have known these kinds of techniques forever, but the question is integration into a whole that actually makes economic sense. And to, to manage that kind of complexity is an, a big problem. Like, for example, one thing we learned and in the next iteration we'll solve is just simple things like the water going in the top of the towers. Uh, it splashes a little bit and therefore it leaks all over the, the vertical towers. It ends up causing too much humidity and, and just spilling, just making a mess in a greenhouse. Like little details, detail after detail that you have to work out that unfortunately is uh, we could not find anywhere. So it was kind of, uh, we had to sweat through it to make it work out and it ended up working quite well and we do believe we can get a a good commercial operation out of this and this is our next step yeah Uh, not specifically, but we know that, uh, I mean, this might sound crazy, but in today's society, we throw down our wastes down, down the drain, down the toilet, right? But I think we can include that and have a system that actually works like that between human waste and if you simply, like, for example, mow your lawn in the front and make that into growth medium for either worms or uh, pellets for rabbits or... Uh, fish food or something else or mushroom mushroom stock you can definitely do it but no we don't have enough data on that but I think the the implications are clear that uh, closed loop systems as such including water would be good for Mars and if we got to go anywhere else Yeah. 
on the fragility i think no that's that's a great point and because we've got so many things in there and we're designing for resilience i think you can do it but you just have to put in a lot of different elements that are typically segregated and it's that's a hard part yeah thank you
Thank you. Yeah, look, uh, yeah, can you tell me a little more? So if we have a fully hydraulic tractor which can operate on hydraulic solenoids, would it be easy to convert using the agro, ag open GPS? Yeah. I'm wondering how how difficult it would be to use the current system because we we make the tractors and we make them hydraulic so we don't have steering wheels we have joysticks kind of like skid steer operation uh, would it be doable to do that um, has anyone tried that kind of a route or Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. And you're at Uni La Salle. It's AgriLab. What are your current main efforts right now? Are you doing more automation work or like on a small tractors, micro precision tractors? Are you continuing? Mm -hmm. uh, are you actively pursuing the tractor project still or is that done?
And what is the main uh, tool chain there? Are you using ROS or what are you what are you using for the software hardware? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we're building a, another uh, bunch of the newer model of the tractor this September. Do you guys have anybody that you can send here for a month and help us do the automation on it? We can pay them and can hire you as an instructor. Any possibility as such? Yeah, yeah. So if we wanted to to get some assistance in implementing a system like this, um, how would we go about that? Many, many questions as far as still work work to be uh, solved, or what do you mean by that?
Is the software pretty stable or is it pretty hard to use? Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. It's the same what? Same accuracy or what what are you comparing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much. Very, very informative. We'll see what we can do about this. Yes, we have both. So one one track is people come to workshops to get the experience of building and building one of these. But we want want to make it into a turnkey product that we can produce. I mean, people can download the plans right now, but we also want to have a turnkey service where somebody could just simply hire us. Here, I want a greenhouse in front of my house. Build one for me. And the second thing is I, I think about the distributed urban gardening thing. If we have the ability to produce these in many places. We would like to use them as distributed gardening operations that can serve CSAs, community supported agricultures. So uh, we'd like to do all of that and we're, we're getting ready to do that. I think um, the amount of experiments we've done on it, it's, yeah, it's a complex system, but I, th I think the potential there is really high as far as what it can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're building we're building one of these, and uh, so this is going to be in September of this year that we're doing the third major prototype or iteration that is pretty much close to to a product release, I would say. So we'll see if we can actually make that. A, we we want to make it actually a standard feature because uh, we also build houses, starting to build houses, the C eco homes. Uh, so we'd like to offer that. Here's an option that you can also get this turnkey greenhouse. Um, so we'd like to offer both. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep.
I was looking at so they're selling that that model for about nine thousand dollars, nine thousand euros. Basic. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, what, I, I was looking at that the page. What, what is what do they claim for their productivity? And what do they say about one family can make how much food out of that? Do they actually have good data or? Four hundred kilos for one family for how long? So go up there. I said something said four hundred kilos for a family. Four hundred kilos per what length? What length of time? Is that yearly production? Yeah. thousand pounds oh yeah <clears throat> mm hmm <clears> hmm <throat> <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Do you know those people or it's not open source, is it or Yeah, and that system is not open source, is it, or are they publishing? Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll gobble them up. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's very informative. That's a good study of industry standards and open source or not open source aquaponics style greenhouses of high productivity. That's good. Good to see. Um, hmm. <laughs> 